Texas A&M. If you're not aware, Texas A&M beat Alabama Saturday night, 41-38. You made a comment uh, before we started to record, Andrew. I said the same thing a number of times to people calling in the call-in show after the game was that once Texas A&M jumped out by 10, I think that's the biggest lead they had, 17-7, 24-14, 24-10. So they had a 14-point lead, 24-10 at halftime. That once Alabama caught them and passed them at 38-31, I thought, not that I thought it was impossible. It was a one-score game, but it had the feel. Alabama scored 21 straight points here. They were the big favorite. They've taken the surge of momentum out of the game, the crowd. They've taken the lead. Good effort by Texas A&M. Good effort to build on. But this game's over. Alabama's taking it. So the really impressive thing was blowing a two-touchdown lead, being down by a score, and having to score back-to-back, get the stop in between, and win the game. Yeah, it was super impressive. And uh, to that point, I mean, just 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 looking at what they had done offensively, they hadn't got anything going um, since basically halftime. They they just really had kind of gone stagnant on off on offense. Um, couldn't pick up first downs, which was putting their defense right back on the field over and over and over again. And then with their backs against the wall, they come up with a great drive, uh, finish it off with a great throw from from Zach Calzada to Anaya Smith. And what what really impressed me about that touchdown throw was the way he stood in there. He had, obviously had a defender roll into his knee, um, but he took in there. He stood in there knowing he was going to take a hit and delivered a great ball and. Um, I thought that was a really, really impressive drive just with their backs against the wall. And um, the ending of this game, I think for a lot of A&M fans, felt a little bit, just the fourth quarter in general, felt a little bit like Florida last year. And the punches that they took from Florida late in the game and um, some of the key throws that Kellen Mond made late in that game. And I think that the crazy part about it is, you know, it's, it's 38-38. Defense comes up with a with a big stop, just as it did last year against Florida, forced the fumble. Offense goes right down and, and sets up a short field goal for, for Seth Small. It just had a, like an eerily similar feeling both times that um, they've, they've picked up a huge win, and it was one day apart, actually. One day, one day's difference between the Florida and, and Alabama game. But, yeah, just a huge credit because, yeah, all the momentum in the second half was most certainly with – with Alabama and um, to come back and then and and tie that game back up and take the lead was was really impressive. And the same score, right? Same score Wasn't, too. Yep. Yeah, it was same, 41 38. Yeah. Yeah. 41 38 and yeah, almost a almost a year to the day of, of that game. And it, it was just eerily similar when I looked at the fourth quarter and you know you it, obviously they didn't force a fumble, but just the way the defense was able to force a quick three and out, get it right back to AM with a chance to win the game. It was, it was eerily similar. And it was, it was, it was impressive. Just the response and um, just the way that entire game played out, especially late. 